Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use VS Code to debug your Nintendo 64 ROMs. Um, just like this, I push play, pops up and sends pops up sends 64, and here we are. We're stopped in the debugger at the beginning of our code. Um, at this point, we can step over, we can set breakpoints, step in, continue, step in. We can inspect the value of local variables and global variables. Um, continue. Pause at that point, it'll show us where it's paused, give us the stack frame. Um, very useful for debugging ROMs. Um, it's, it's a difference in night and day having this tool. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have debug symbols included with your final ROM. Um, so this is a make file for one of the examples uh, included with the N64 SDK. And uh, so I'm just going to be modifying this. Um, so you can see the first thing you need to do is just add dash g to that. That tells the compiler to include debug symbols. I'm also going to remove this optimization here. Um, so it, it it just works better with the debugger if you do that. Uh, you may notice that I just changed it to be the version that's down below. And if I just took final off, it would use that. Um, but I found that I, I have trouble with the debug ROM I or the debug library for Liberal Lib Ultra. I don't know what's wrong, but I just found that if, if I just keep it final, it works. So I just modify these flags up here. So now that that's like that, um, we should be able to run make. I'm gonna do make clean first and now make. And you can see it rebuilt everything and uh, let's, let's just look at one of these commands here. You can see it's compiling a source file, and sure enough, we have the dash g flag included. That will include debug symbols. Um, the next thing you need to make sure is that subsequent steps um, preserve those debug symbols. Um, you may be getting trouble if you are using spicy, like I am. You may be getting trouble with that, um, and that is because the the version that's the current version on the main repo strips out debugging symbols. So I have a pull request open at the moment that fixes that. Um, there is It explicitly removes those debug symbols right here with dash s. That just says strip out debug symbols. And then also down here during the LD script, it will also just discard everything that hasn't been used, including debug symbols. So I have to pare that down to just a few things that we, do, that we want to remove, but debug symbols are preserved. So if you are using spicy, you're going to want to either um, cherry pick this commit um, or use my branch. Um, either way, uh, you will need to make sure that Spicy preserves those debug symbols. You may want to verify that you have debug symbols. Uh, I found the easiest way to do that is just to run GDB. So you do GDB. I use GDB multi arch that has MIPS support, which you'll need to debug the Nintendo 64 since it runs a MIPS processor. Um, but you just do dash Q and then you put the the elf file that was outputted by spicy. Um, it's going to be the same name as your dot n64 file, but with the dot out extension. So in this case, I have simple dot out, and there you go. You can see it says reading symbols from simple dot out, and then no additional errors after that. Um, just so you can see what it looks like if you do have errors, they have a, a dot out file that doesn't have the symbols. I run that and you'll see if you don't have symbols it'll say no debugging symbols found in simple no simple no symbols out. That means that something along the way you, you either didn't generate your symbols initially when building or it got lost in one of the linking steps. So that's just a good thing to kind of check before uh, but check now that you have the debugging symbols before continuing on. Okay the next step is you're going to need a version of Send64 that has the debugger in it. Um, if you just get the latest version from source, um, then you can build that. I recommend that if you're using Linux. Um, there also there's also a release. I'll link in the description uh, for Windows if you want to use Windows. But um, it's just it's really simple. So I've I've already cloned the uh, Sen64 source code here, and then and to build it, all you have to do is just do CMake, run that. It'll configure, and then make. Um, I've already built it, so it's up to date, but just those two commands will build uh, Send64, and you can see 
right here in this directory there is send64 that is the executable we will be using um, going forward now let's start debugging so let's go ahead and run send64 so we just run it from the directory here and then the important thing is we include the debug flag we then need to specify the port we want to be running on I just use 8080 um, we need to specify the PIF data uh, and then the last thing is we need the, lo the location of the ROM we're running. In this case, it's the simple N64 here. I'm just going to copy that path, paste that over here, and there we go. So we run that, and Sense64 opens, but it opens paused. And you can see down here it says it's waiting for a GDB connection. Um, so the next thing we need to do then is now run GDB and connect to Sense64. And then to connect to Sense64, let's just go ahead and come back over here. And we're going to run GDB multi-arch like we were doing before. Um, but now, since we have a uh, the Sense64 waiting for a connection, we can just connect. So we specify that we want to specify the target is a remote connection. We specify the same port as before. And there we go. We are now connected. And um, you'll know it's working because it tells us this. So let's actually come in here and add a breakpoint. Um, so here in init game, let's just say break in init game. I can hit C for continue, and there we go. We've now um, we are now running the debugger, and now you can see though I'm only running this in the console. I do not have the visual debugging capabilities that I'll explain in a second. But this is working down here in the in the console. If you know GDB commands, or if that's what your preferred way of debugging is, then that's all you need here. Um, but I, I find it much easier to use a visual debugger like what comes with VS Code. Um, so the next step is is showing you how that works. Okay, I'll be able to put all this together in a few tasks and, and uh, launch configurations in VS Code to automatically run Sim64 and run the debugger and connect to it all just with a single keystroke. Um, so the first thing I recommend is uh, the extension I use here is called VGDB it just lets you use GDB with uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, so that's what I'm using here, and if I come to launch.json, here's the configuration I'm using. Uh, so you specify you want VGDB. It's an attach request, meaning it doesn't start the program, but it connects to an existing already running program. Um, just This name doesn't matter, this is just what I've named it. But the important thing here is that you use GDB multi-arch, um, because if you just use GDB, it's going to think you're using an x86 architecture. Um, but this um, I, works. This, this works with MIPS. Um, I mean, that there might be a way to get regular GDB to work, but I found that this is the easiest way. You can get GDB multi-arch just with the uh, sudo apt install GDB multi-arch. And you can see I have already installed it, but that's how you would install it if you hadn't already. Uh, but this just overrides the, this just tells the, the extension which executable to use for debugging. And then you specify for the program, not the n64 file, but the dot out file that has the debugging symbols. Um, and then the last thing is I just have a few startup commands that I use. These are run first thing when the, when the debugger first connects um, or first starts up, it runs these commands first. So I just tell it to set the architecture type. Um, it will detect that it's a MIPS 4000 series on its own just from the, sim the, the out file, the, the debugging symbols, but this just refines it down to the specific processor of the N64. Um, you specify the target remote um, and the port that you want to connect to. Um, and then the last thing I do is I want it to stop at of actual line of source code and not not at the system entry point. So I have these two commands here. The first one tells it to break break inside of the entry point for the program. So that is this function here in a game. So it adds a break point on the first line of this function. And then C for continue it runs and so when I actually run and launch it will stop at that function and you can use whatever function you want as your entry point um, and have it automatically set the breakpoint or you, you you could you could not do that and have it 
enter in the system breakpoint. You know, this is entirely optional, but it's just a kind of a convenience thing for me. The other thing um, that you need to do, if you notice, this this just runs the debugger, but we actually need to run send64 first. So what I've done is I add a pre-launch task, and this will run before this launch task is done. Um, and so uh, I just have it so it says run 64, send, run send 64 with debugger and then delay. And so let's come over to my tasks. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So this is what actually runs send 64, but the reason why I have the second one is there is a short time in which send 64 will start up but not be ready for a connection and if you if the debugger runs too soon then it will fail to connect so I just have this command that all it does is it sleeps for some time um, and it depends on actually running the debugger so the order of things will happen is it'll actually run this command very first wait 1.5 seconds and then run the launch command here um, so if we just come back to what this command's doing, um, the problem matcher in his background, uh, that's not super important. You can use these settings here. What all that does though is it makes it so it doesn't wait for send64 to finish before continuing on to this command. Because we want it to not finish, we want it to stay open for launch to connect to it, for this the debugger to connect to it over here in launch.json. Um, so the command here is pretty straightforward. It's just a shell type command. Um, this points to our build event send64 with the debugger. And as we saw before, we specify that we want it to debug. Here's the port, um, the pif, and then everything else is as normal. The pif data dot bin, and then the ROM we want it to run. Um, and it's just it's just important that the ROM that we give send64 is the one associated with the out file we give to the debugger. Um, that will ensure that the debugging symbols match, and you'll have a you can just have the debugging experience. So if you were to add this launch data and this and these uh, these tasks, um, you can then just come over here, select what you want, push run, and there we go. We have a working Visual Debugger um, for debugging your code using Visual Studio Code. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, I mean, I'll try to watch for questions in the comments, but um, you could also always join the Nintendo 64 Homebrew Discord channel. Uh, very great community. Um, I sh I'll, I'm in there. You can ask me questions, or you can... Uh, many, many people there will, will be happy to answer questions. So, hope that was useful, and um, thank you.